almost all automotive carburetors will use some type of an accelerator pump. The purpose of the accelerator pump is that when the throttle is opened quickly, air flows a lot faster than fuel. You have to have a way of temporarily enriching that mixture to prevent any type of a stumble or a hesitation on the vehicle. And that's the job of the accelerator pump. The accelerator pump in this illustration is what they call a diaphragm type pump. This is out of a, a typical older Holly two or four barrel carburetor. Uh, the way it works, you have actually a uh, accelerator pump reservoir and diaphragm down in here. Uh, there's what they call an inlet check ball here that allows fuel from the float bowl to be pull, pulled into this um, uh, the reservoir. And then when you apply the throttle, fuel is then forced through this small passage past a uh, check ball and weight, um, and or maybe just a ball or maybe just a weight, depending on the type of carburetor, and then up through this passage, and then it'll discharge. Um, out of two nozzles um, and into the airflow. In the last year, I've seen three carburetors, actually one Holly carburetor and two Carter or uh, Edelbrock performer type carburetors, where the vehicles have sat for a long period of time. Um, and then once fuel is added to the carburetor and the vehicle is started, the, the uh, operator experiences a, a hesitation or a sag on acceleration. As it turns out, the accelerator pump is not working. Um, the reason is this check ball uh, and weight or check ball or weight actually ends up over a long period of time, it can stick in this bore right in here. And then even though you operate the throttle um, and there is fuel in the reservoir, fuel can't get out. It can't get out in through or discharge the nozzles because that uh, ball or weight um, has stuck. On this video, I'd like to show you how you could remove the discharge nozzle on either a, a Holly carburetor or an Edelbrock Performer carburetor um, and uh, remove this weight or weight and ball um, and solve that problem. Uh, this illustration shows an example of a piston type accelerator pump. Um, it's a similar deal to what would be used in the, the Holly carburetor, the diaphragm type accelerator pump. In this case, it's a piston. So same idea, we have uh, an inlet check ball that allows fuel from the float bowl into the uh, accelerator pump reservoir. And then when you apply the throttle, fuel comes up through this passageway and then uh, unseats a weight uh, and a ball, or possibly just a ball, and then the fuel is then discharged through the accelerator pump nozzle. This type of system you would find in uh, the Edelbrock Performer carburetor, and what I wanna do again in this video is show you how to remove that uh, check ball or check ball and weight um, dislodge it if it's stuck after sitting for a long period of time, and then uh, that should fix the uh, accelerator pump uh, not working issue. Here's our Holly four barrel carburetor, and this screw right here is holding down the accelerator pump nozzles. We're going to have to remove this screw. Um, also, in the case of the Holly carburetor, most likely you can do this on the car if you're careful. So we're going to remove this screw. And what I meant by careful is we don't want to drop anything down the carburetor. Um, so a Phillips screwdriver. We should be able to loosen this guy. I find a, a long, thin needle nose pliers works pretty well. We're removing the screw and then the accelerator pump nozzle you should also be able to grab that carefully and lift it out the accelerator pump um, outlet weight is right down in this bore 
a little difficult to see. Um, this one will not stick to a magnet, so we don't want to turn the carburetor upside down because I'm assuming we're doing this on the car. So what I find can work is uh, like a, a drill bit or something that, you know, about that diameter of a drill bit with a little piece of tape on the end of it should be able to fit down into this bore carefully and it should stick to the weight. What we might have to do is wiggle it a little bit to break it loose if it is stuck. And that's what the weight looks like. That's it. And again, what happens sometimes is you'll have to get in there first with a pick, maybe like this, and just wiggle the top of the, the weight, and then you'll be able to pull it out. And there is a possibility there's a ball under it, depending on the type of carburetor you have, in which case then... You could use the same pick, wiggle the ball a little bit, um, and use the same method with the uh, maybe a, a drill bit and a little piece of tape and pull the ball out. Or in most cases, the ball will be able to stick to a magnet. So you could use the uh, same drill bit with a, a magnet stuck to it, drop it down the hole, pull the ball out. At this point, uh, you inspect that weight in the ball um, for any damage. Um, I've seen sometimes just a, the tiniest bit of corrosion that'll show up maybe on the side of it that's kind of binding it in the bore, um, in which case uh, a rag with a little bit of carburetor cleaner probably will take that right off. A little squirt of uh, carburetor cleaner maybe down that uh, the bore where the weight would fit right in there. And then I think at that point, um, you're good to go uh, and start reassembling. You just reassemble in reverse order. We can, again, carefully take that weight with some small needle nose pliers. We can drop it back into its bore. And again, there might be a check ball also, depends on the carburetor. Uh, we can take our accelerator pump nozzle. We can put that back also, there may or may not be a gasket under it, so you'll have to look for that. And then we can take the screw, carefully put that back on. Uh, then with the Phillips screwdriver, we can snug that up and you're done if it's an edelbrock performer carburetor it's a little bit more difficult more than likely you're not going to be able to do it on the car you're not going to want to do it on their car because what you have to do is remove the whole top of the carburetor it's not that hard but i i've found there's just too much small stuff to drop to try to bend over the fenders and pull the top of the carburetor off I think it's probably a lot easier to remove the carburetor and do this on a bench like I have it right here. What we're going to have to do is actually we have to remove this screw right there because that's what, what's holding on the um, accelerator pump um, uh, nozzles. And you can't remove it without taking the top of the carburetor off. So that's what we're going to do. Here's the Edelbrock Performer carburetor with the top off. Um, I have another video that I've made um, that uh, describes how you remove the top to replace an accelerator pump, and I'll put the link to that one um, uh, in the information. Um, this is what we're going to have to remove. There's the accelerator pump nozzle uh, with these two torque screws. But just as a side note, the accelerator pump, I borrowed this carburetor from a friend of mine. It hasn't been used for quite a few years. And when I took the top off and I removed the accelerator pump, this is what I found. Obviously, the um, accelerator pump boot is not where it's supposed to be. Um, and so this is probably a, a good reason if you find yourself a, a used carburetor before you just plop it on the car, you might want to take it apart and take a good look at it because I'm Definitely would not have wanted to use this thing. 
So the, the torque screws that are holding down the accelerator nozzles are a T20. So that would be a T20 Torx size screw. So we'll remove these guys. And once you got the screws loosened and removed, then we can, we might have to put just a tiny bit of force on this guy just to, to break it loose. This one is loose. We can remove the nozzle. Uh, this one does use a, uh, a gasket underneath it. So we'll set that aside. And then here we can see the top of the, uh, the uh, accelerator pump weight right there. We could, if we want, um, uh, turn the carburetor upside down and that uh, weight and the ball that should be under it uh, will come out. Uh, but in this case, I'd like to do the same as I did on the Holly carburetor and just use a drill bit with a piece of tape. First, I want to, well, this one, I can wiggle around pretty good so that guy is loose and it should come out pretty easy with this little piece of tape on a drill bit and there it is there's our weight and we should be able to do the same thing with the ball and there it is again this one came out pretty easily. Um, you might just have to use a pick, go down in there and just move it a little bit and that'll it'll break loose if there's something that's holding it on its seat. Once you get both of these cleaned up, again using maybe a, a cloth and a little bit of carburetor cleaner, um, you should just be able to put them right back into where they should go. So the, the ball goes in first. So we got that in there and then the weight. We can put the uh, accelerator pump nozzle assembly back on. Um, usually they come off real easy without damaging the gasket, so make sure it, it isn't damaged, but they, they shouldn't be put back on with any type of sealant, so the gasket should come off pretty easily. So that will go back on there. And then our two T20 torque screws back on and then we can tighten these guys back up um, snug them down and then the top can go back on the carburetor here are our holly four barrel and our edelbrock four barrel carburetors back together hopefully that gives you a good idea how to uh, disassemble and reassemble the uh, accelerator pump check valve circuits I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.